What's up, everybody? Welcome to another week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm Justin Martindale, and this week's guest, I mean, my God, it can't be May without, you know, the one, the only you know, pop superstar, uh, father, podcaster. He has his own podcast called Frosted Tips. My friend, it's Lance Bass. Well, hello there. <laughs> How and are yes, you? It's May. It is May. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I, if this happens, it's it's everything. How is your May <laughs> so far? And I just uh, saw today a great meme that I'm going to use on May 1st. It's uh, just a, a, a calendar of May and it has sugar on it. Pour some sugar on May. You know what? There are so many yeah. like good Mays. Yeah. And then the Backstreet Boys are trying to do it. No. With, as long as you love May. I'm like, oh, don't okay. even try it. Oh, now we're starting? Oh, don't try it, BSB fan. Now we're trying don't it. Don't take our holiday away from you. Take everything else from us. No. There was always Leave a good something. one. There was always a good one too. I uh, The Britney Spears one. It's like, show May. May. <laughs> That's what I would. How you want it to, May, 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 May. It's yeah. become a thing. Like every mm-hmm. April 30th it's mm. it's the memes go um and it's just non-stop and uh it's kind of like on the the same level as october 4th being mean girls day right. april 30th yeah. is always it's gonna it's be a holiday it is it so is. what do we do about it how do we celebrate it i know right <laughs> how do we make money off that because you know is it not? Can no. you not? What do you? How do we make money off that? We need to like throw I, parties or something. I would say call Chris Jenner. <laughs> she will make it happen. But it is a good week because it starts. It's gonna be May Day, uh-huh. and then it goes into my birthday, May Fourth, uh-huh. and then it goes into um, in Cinco de Mayo. So you have a whole week. I know. Oh, did I just lay something on you right now? Yeah, yeah. It ends with in Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> As someone who loves a good pun, that never crossed my mind. Uh-huh, yeah. In Cinco de Mayo, yeah, yeah. how do we celebrate it? Well, lots of Mexican food, uh-huh. which is great. And um, just an in-sync playlist? Yeah, a lot of frosted tips and uh, sombreros. Yeah. <laughs> That's so amazing. Mm-hmm. In Cinco de Mayo, which, you know, when I when I used to work in restaurants, the, all the kitchen staff, like, they would, they would call me Timberlake. Because my yeah. name is Justin. They'd be like, hey, Timberlake. Timberlake. <laughs> and then when I continued to work in restaurants and there was another Justin, they'd be like, hey, Bieber, uh, Justin Bieber. And I'm like, I'm okay, everyone. Yeah, Spanish, not- spe- uh, Spanish speaking people would always call us in Cinco. In Cinco. And I don't know if they really thought that was ever just kind of a fun thing, but it did make sense because mm. there were five of us. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of nice. We in Cinco that. de Mayo. That's yeah. the only way I will be celebrating it from mm-hmm. now on. Yeah. And you guys dominate Christmas every year. Yeah. Look, if you want to live forever, do a Christmas album. I mean, for sure. <laughs> because when you go into Target, you're going to hear it every year. <laughs> or anywhere else. It's not yeah. just Target. If I go to Target. I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm there all the time. It's <laughs> our Target. Um, so, uh, I mean, my gosh, I mean, I don't even know where to start. You have a new podcast that's out called yeah. Frosted Tips, mm-hmm. and you used to have Dirty Pop, right. which I loved. Is this is Frosted Tips still on Sirius XM? Or? No, it's no. now uh, over at iHeart. Okay. And it's, ha- it's everywhere where you get your podcast. Of course. iHeart produces it. Uh, you know, I was with Sirius XM for eight years. Yeah, that was fun. You were like the first podcast serious xm podcast i feel like yeah i felt yeah we didn't know what a podcast was then we uh, still don't <laughs> yeah, yeah but it's been crazy because you know I, I love being in front of the microphone um like i think it's the most intimate amazing you know situation for the fans and the mm-hmm. listeners uh so when iheart said hey would you like to bring some kind of iteration of your dirty pop show back uh i was like yeah i've always wanted to use the name frosted tips yeah and originally it was gonna be nick carter and myself because, you know, we're both known for a little Frosted Tips. Uh, yes. And we were going to give unsolicited uh, life advice <laughs> to <Okay>. our fans. <laughs> um, but they got a little busy on tour because those Backstreet Boys are really killing it right now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he, he wasn't able to do it. So I was like, okay, well, I'll do it. But let's just make it a Teen Idol show, you know, because yeah. I just want to catch up with all the most amazing Teen Idols from, you know, the 60s to now. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun. And we're starting this season with all boy band members. Yes. Yeah, it's been really fun. But podcast has been, it's been crazy this year. I have three now. Um, you have three? Yeah. Well, one is, you know, Frosted Tips, which is kind of the, the weekly show. But this, uh, the other two are the scripted podcast. Um, one is called The Last Soviet. And okay. it's really great. So it's one of those just immersive radio plays. Um, that, the sound effects, everything. You just kind of immerse yourself. Oh, cool. And it, it just takes you back. 
Uh, but one's called The Last Soviet. It just, the last episode just uh, came out. Is it about like the Soviet Union? It is. Uh, it's is this about because the last you couldn't Soviet. go to space? Or well, is this- <laughs> they wanted me to host it because I am a cosmonaut and it's about a cosmonaut. Uh, so it made sense and it yeah. shows the parallels of my story and this guy, uh, Sergei Krikalev. And Sergei, cool. uh, he was the last Soviet. He was stuck in space for th- over 300 days when uh, communism fell in Russia. So uh, it's his whole experience in life um, and using all of his friends and colleagues and all these news articles. It's, it's beautifully done. Cool. Beautifully done. Uh, and then the other one just came out, my bedtime stories in the Ingleside Inn about Palm Springs, uh, which is a true story about Mel Haber, who owns the Ingleside Inn, uh, which is like my favorite boutique hotel in Palm Springs. And uh, in 1975, he just kind of came across He's the one who invented the... Uh, like the the hula girl, you know, that you put in your dashboard and the fuzzy yeah. dice from your rear view mirror. That whole vibe. That, that yeah. thing. So he created all that uh, and then bought this hotel, had no idea what he was doing, and it was a major failure until one guest showed up and it changed the whole city of Palm Springs. Who? Uh, Do we have to listen? Or well, who? you can listen. His name is uh, Sir John and uh, you'll oh. see. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's an emerald mine knighted by the queen, uh, but he was just, he became the toast of the town and everyone wanted to be next to him, so it became the most popular hotel on the West Coast because wow. of this one person. But I'll have it's to a, check that out. It's for funny, sure. but it's great. I mean, you talk about cast. It's Jason Alexander is the star of it. Um, uh, got uh, Jordan Alvarez, uh, myself. Um, my gosh, um, uh, la, 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 la. my gosh, uh, who else? McKean, uh, Missy Pyle. I mean, just oh, all I love kinds of really great comedians. Oh, this cool. Show. And it's just like a, like a story that you guys all take on the characters. Yeah, well, it was, it's a true story. I used to know Mel and unfortunately passed away a few years ago. Um, but he wrote this little book called the bedtime stories of the Ingleside Inn. And it was like this book of short stories that he wrote about, uh, all the things that just happened there. I mean, Goldie Hawn, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all these people, that's and mafia. Everyone just stayed oh, yeah. there. Uh, Always. And so I would stay there, and there's only 15 rooms, and I would read this little book of short stories. And it was just fascinating. I'm like, this is a TV show. Why yeah, is this why, not a is show? It, is that going to be a it show? Will. It will. Our like Burnett, it. actually, we were producing it years ago, but it just never went. Uh, but now with the success of this one, um, I think we are going to be able to sell it. So. Yeah, that sounds awesome yeah. and kitschy and fun. And oh, I yeah. think that's what everybody needs. So once the writer's strike is over. I know, right? Good God, Lord. I'm the same way. I was like, mm. I have all these ideas. Writer's strike yep. today. And we're going to wait on that. Yep. So uh, Always something. Always something. But uh, yes, we love our writers out there. So yes. I support. We all support you. Um, I mean, did you... Uh, let's see. Do I want to get into some questions first? Or do we want to play a game? Because I've got, I've got some like um, some some good questions, but I also want to date us really quick because <laughs> I, love I mean because I feel like we have to because no strings attached. Um, turned twenty three years old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this year. Yeah, this and this month, May twenty sixth of nineteen ninety seven, was when NSYNC's debut album, In Sync came out that's right why are we aging <laughs> um i don't know this it's just crazy how quickly that passed because, right like when we were growing up in the 90s yes you know it was our 50s right i mean it's like you look back that far you're like oh god that's so long ago like our parents lived in the 50s gross that's what people are telling us now oh, yeah. oh wait you went to school in the 90s yeah that's their 50s or i actually had someone say um the 1900s to me. Oh, like, really? They were like, well, that was like the 1900s. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Did I invent the car? Oh like, what's God. happening? I've not heard that one yet. But that, yeah, that's uh, that's sad. Yeah. Oh, back in the 1900s. The you 19... were born in the 1900s? Yes. <gasps> yes. Yeah. That's and I sad. survived typhoid, apparently. Uh, so We'll see. And I... I was born in 79. Mm-hmm. So I'm always I'm like, you couldn't wait six more months, parents. Yeah. You couldn't just six more months so I can say I was born in the 80s. Oh, no. Now I sound really old being the, born in the, the 70s. The 79, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't remember the 70s. You know, I don't. Yeah. But I was born in them. That's why I say I was like, I grew up in the 90s because mm-hmm. I did. Yeah. Like, I was there like, the 80s, but like, yeah. who cares? I know. Well, we couldn't do anything fun in the 80s. No. Like, like I went like ice skating. High and school I and college looked so fun in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It absolutely did. But I also think high school and college was way better in the 90s. Yeah. Especially, I didn't get to go to college, but high school was fun. Well, you were that. busy like in a boy band. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that was my college. I mean, that's the thing. I'm like, would you rather go to college or would you ba- wouldn't be in like the most successful boy band in the in the world? I'll choose the band. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I was sitting in like, 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 what was that? What's that class economics? Uh. <laughs> and I was just like, what is this? No, political <laughs> science failed no. it like twice. Mm. And I'm like watching you guys on TRL, and I'm like, Grr! yeah, I was Grr! very lucky because you know I liked school for the social aspect of it, but. I hated study. I just did not like the academic part of school. <laughs> At all. I'd yeah. rather be like hanging out and like going to the VMAs and stuff. Mm, yeah. That was it. Now, mm. let's talk about that real quick because TRL was a, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like a- like a Cult? A cult, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, it was. Do you remember mm. the first time being on TRL and what that was like? Um, God, I don't really remember the first time. It was definitely- 98 like yeah. you know what the the first season of it um and i yeah i mean just being there at 1515 broadway seeing the fans outside and it still was just getting its feet at that time too. yeah um didn't really know what to expect i just remember wild orchid was one of the first groups on that god bless <laughs> right? wild orchid fergie and you know and because some of the girls, some kids me. incorporated. Yeah. And I, you know, we were friends with those girls and they were kind of on our label and they would tour with us. But I remember thinking, oh, they're on MTV. Oh, I want to be on MTV. Uh, so I was just so excited when they were actually shown on TRL. So we got to do it because we were living in Germany for a couple of years first. Because that's where your album dropped first. Right. Was we released in that Germany. one in 97. 97. Yeah. Uh, so we spent some time over there kind of, you know, figuring out what we were. <laughs> yeah. Especially in Germany. What a, what a oh good time gosh. to figure it out. <laughs> we, were, we were so new. I mean, we had been a band for a year at that point and we didn't really know what we were going to be. I mean, we knew we wanted to perform and dance and, you know, we're definitely love pop. But we grew up on R&B. Mm-hmm. Uh, loved acapella, but you get to Germany, and they're like, okay, you're going to be singing techno now. I'm like, oh, okay, we're going to experiment with this kind of music right now. And it was horrible, horrible. So, yeah, the first album in Germany had some real good bangers on it. <laughs> like what? Do you remember? <laughs> uh, there's one called I Need Love. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've checked that one out. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's bad. I mean, that was when, you know, LaBouche and all that was Okay. Happening. Oh, LaBouche, though, yeah. was like next level. Of course. And that did was you, our Florida Did you see the video? There was like a TikTok going around about like all the 90s. I'm trying to remember who who posted it, but it was like some of the best techno songs were like led by African-American women. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, the whole time. Mm-hmm. Robin yeah. S, LaBouche. Yeah. Uh, and it was always Florida for some reason. Really? Uh, Turbo and like all those just, yeah, just random Orlando-ish artists. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I feel like, didn't y'all go? Snap. Snap. <laughs> yeah. With an exclamation point. Uh-huh. It but takes like, two to make a thing go wrong. It takes two to make a thing Yeah, I mean, I I loved LaBouche. Mm-hmm. Anytime, any day, anytime it comes no on. No Mercy. Here. What was that? No Mercy was the three guys from Miami. Two twins and then the lead singer. Uh, Where do you go? My lovely. Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Mm-hmm. But there's no, they don't make music like that anymore. No. And I is. miss it. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing. It's like if there was a show where you could go back to a club in like the late 90s, early mm-hmm. 2000s even. Because I feel like even when Sync was like, like 2001, 2002, like you, I guess you guys just did what Celebrity had come yeah, out Celebrity then. Yeah, Celebrity was 2001. But mm-hmm. like it was like that weird Euro pop, like mm-hmm. Eiffel 65 yeah. and then like... Like Lasgo, mm-hmm. like all that was out, and we were just in the clubs, just oh, yeah. dancing. Now I don't even know, like what <laughs> be like. Sit down, I blame Dad. that on Barbie Girl because Barbie Girl kind of started that whole Euro. Yes, yeah, Aqua the, for sure, mm-hmm. which are coming back because of the Barbie movie. I thought they weren't doing it. No, yeah, they announced a whole tour album, everything. But are they singing Barbie Girl in the movie? No, I don't think they're even in the movie at all. Then what's the point? (laughs) I think they're like, we're going to ride this boat. (laughs) Are you kidding me? Let's do this. They said no, but we're not going anywhere. Good for them, though. I I mean, let's see. Let's get into some... um, You were actually helping me with the um, Drag Isn't Dangerous telethon, which is airing this Sunday, May 7th. But can I say drag is pretty dangerous? Why? Have you ever danced in high heels? Well, I mean, to them it is. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm <laughs> That's saying. It's different. very dangerous. I'm just saying. It's a, you know. Drag is dangerous, but the people who are saying it is dangerous are not doing it. Uh, they could do a little drag in their lives. Exactly. But we are, this is a live stream. It's going to be on Moment. It's actually, we got it announced that it's going to be on YouTube Live as well. And I mean, we just keep adding and adding and adding. People are like, you know, of course it's the last week. LA's 
you know, they're like, we want to do it. I'm like, we've been trying all friggin' month. <laughs> so people are showing up. You know, we've got, I mean, I can't even tell you who we have. We have every drag queen mm-hmm. pretty much that's been on RuPaul's Drag Race. We've got Leslie Jones. We've got Sherry O'Terry. We've got um, Jesse Eisenberg, Charlize Theron, like everybody, Ali Wong. Uh, everyone's kind of popping in to give their two cents worth. And and you are going to submit a video, which I'm very excited because yes, you're going to be gone. I'll be in Texas, but in Cinco de Mayo. For, for in Cinco de Mayo? De Gale, yeah. I mean, how on brand is that? <laughs> you're going to be in my home state on in Cinco de Mayo. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's fine. Um <laughs> But um, I want to talk about, you actually said last week on SiriusXM, the Jess Cagle show, you kind of dropped a bombshell and said that you are now more financially well off after NSYNC oh, than yeah. during NSYNC. Yeah. It's funny that everyone like picked that up. Like, I made a whole documentary on it. You did? Wait, <laughs> tell the name of it. It's on. Is it on YouTube Red or uh, YouTube? It's on, yeah, YouTube. I but think it's just YouTube. I YouTube. think it you is don't now. You have to like, pay for it or anything. Yeah, no. Uh, it's called The Boy Band Con. It's um, absolutely awesome. Yeah, it's incredible. About Lou Pearlman, our ex-manager, label president. And uh, I mean, he just... Ponzi scheme aficionado? Major, like, just was... <laughs> I mean, he died in prison. Uh, yeah. But, How do you, you know, feel about that? Uh, you know, I'm. it was weird to know how to feel mm-hmm. after something like that. But I don't know. I've, I've definitely have a lot of forgiveness now. Like I For just, sure. I've had a lot of therapy. Yeah. So, uh, I, I have, I've forgiven him, whatever. Like I, that doesn't bother me at all. But doing that documentary was so cathartic for me because that's where I started forgiving everything that happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, because again, without him, I wouldn't be here right now. So there was a lot of good that came out of it, but you know, when you have a situation like that and you're one of the biggest bands in the world for such a you know long time and you're selling out, you know, Concerts, and number one albums, and then doing the Super Bowl. Yeah, and like. then you can't, you know, and then you don't have like enough saved up to even like support yourself after that's over. It's like that's that's not right. That's not right at there, all. There's there's that one scene in the in the film where you guys are talking about like how there was that dinner party. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there's the like check a presentation. The check presentation. <laughs> Oh, uh, so you're all sitting and you're with your moms, right? Oh, yeah, the whole fam was there. Lou's like, you know, oh, guys, I'm gonna, you know, it's a big Czech presentation. The president of our label in Germany flew over. We're at, uh, what was that? It's here on La Cienega, uh, the steak place that known for the prime rib. Uh, uh, Larson's? Car- Sar- Larson. Landry's? La- is it Landry's? It, or it's, it's, no, hold on. Oh, uh, what is that? I know you can buy. I drive like, by it all the time. It's you can some... buy the salt in the stores. Yes. Lowry's. 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 Yes. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so we were so excited. And we've been together for wow, almost four years at this point, and like you know, pretty big. And we still hadn't gotten paid. Paid in four years, you haven't been paid. <laughs> still gotten paid. You have a song called "Just Got Paid." I know. <laughs> well, we were trying to, you know, we were trying to put it in the universe before, so we finally get paid. early manifestation. Right so we were excited. I didn't know. I mean, I'm still young, so and you know, I came from nothing, so anything would have been great. You know, I'm just so excited. I can finally maybe buy a car, maybe, or, or get a house, or you know, something, or get my mom to retire. I didn't know what this was going to be. Um, and how much were you expecting? Like, what was going? You're like, this is the well, I was the ho- figure that I'm thinking. I mean, it would have been. I was hoping, and it was wishful thinking, a million each, right? Like, okay. just like we've we've worked so hard. I know we've sold gajillions of albums. Like, you know, I know the record labels made hundreds of millions at this point. So like, you know, give us, you know, give five million to us and we'll split it, right? Mm -hmm. Which, of course, when we split that, we'd have to split it six ways with Lou and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, So, yeah, he gives us the check and it was (laughs) $10,000. God! Yeah. Uh, Which is a lot of money for, you know, you know, a lot of people. But, you know, it just it just did not equal to what work we put into it. No kidding. Did your mom like say anything? My no. mom would have been like, "Excuse no. me." Like, our, <laughs> our whole families were just too nice, you know. Uh-huh. So they, and they didn't know anything. They, I mean, they definitely expected more. But uh, I guess they were thinking, "Well, I guess that's normal then." But I was just so pissed at that point, and that was where it just kind of snapped in me, and I ripped the check up, and I was like, ah, "You ripped it up wait, at the table?" Not at the table. Oh. I got back of those. I was like, "Zoop, done." Um, and that's where the process started of us you know, going to court with him and all that. Cause he sued us. We didn't sue him. Really? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause you were the one that kind of like instigated the whole, like, Hey, this isn't right. We need to. Yeah. Like- JC and I were the ones who were like, okay. Cause he had, his uncle was a lawyer. And of course our lawyer was Lou Perlman's lawyer. <laughs> That's who looked uh. over our contract. So it was all good. Right. 
so now we finally got an independent lawyer. Um, and then, yeah, we went down that road and it was, we were lucky because in our contract, the, the way that we got out of it was, uh, he was supposed to sign us to an American label by mm -hmm. a certain point, but we were German. So our contract was in, you know, void. Uh, so we left our label RCA in America, um, and RCA didn't believe us. They're like, yeah, right. And we're like, we're on loose side. There's, you know, we're, you're signed us. We're like, no, we're not. And we signed with Jive behind their back and they were pissed. I mean, that made like national news. I remember being uh, like seeing that on the news. Oh yeah. Well, that's when he over. took us to court yeah. and we couldn't use our name cause he owns the name in sync. And so we were in court and, uh, in Orlando and the judge you know, sees us five over here and Lou over there and. He's trying to explain that he's in sync. And she's like, wait oh, a God. minute. She's like, hmm. So you're saying, Mr. Perlman, that these five guys who my daughter has their poster in her bedroom, yeah. on her bedroom wall, that they're not in sync, but you are. She's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. So she ruled in our favor that we could get our name back. Wow. Yeah. So to that young girl at the time, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably now a mom uh -huh. with kids in Florida uh -huh. somewhere. God so that, bless. That's insane. So yeah, check out that movie. It's it's fascinating because mm. it's just, it's not only you guys. It's like O-Town. It's a bunch Isn't of it? people. I just, I chose different people from different groups that were under the Transcon under, yeah. label. Um, and one of the fascinating subjects in is Aaron Carter, you know, it was mm -hmm. his last film that he did before he passed away. Oh, right. He just passed away like a month ago. Uh, or two wow, months ago. It was like half a year ago now. Was it yeah. half a year ago? Yeah, because it took six months to get the toxology report back. It just came out last week. Oh, yeah. poor guy. But you can just see the effects of someone that young. Yes. Under an umbrella like Lou Pearlman. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see him defending him. And you could tell yeah. that he was... On something. See, at that point, I mean, I've known Aaron my whole life, but I didn't know the struggles he was going through. Mm -hmm. um, but when he was doing the documentary, whoa, I'm like, what is wrong with Aaron? Yeah. And the way he was defending Lou and just, I mean, he was crying and just really just going against what everyone was saying. I'm like, why is he defending him it's so like much? It's like that disbelief. Because mm -hmm. I think I remember seeing you, I don't know if it was like at your house or something, and it was after... Um, after I I had talked to you before or after that movie, and I, we were talking about that, and you were like, "Oh yeah, I called you called him, and you mm -hmm. were talking to him about like how is he doing? Is he mm -hmm. okay?" Mm -hmm. And I think that was the last time that I that that, that I heard yeah, you mention that. Yeah, because we got really close, you know, after that doc because we went on tour together. So I yeah. hosted this tour that he was on, and and it looked like he was getting better, but then he would kind of relapse. Um, and then he came to me and said, I, because of your documentary, I want you to do a documentary on me. And I was like, well, that's a perfect part two of this because now you really kind of get into like what's the going on. psyche of an eight year old that has to, you know, has this crazy fame with horrible managers. Um, and I thought, and he just kind of wanted kind of a redemption story and show like what his life was and his, you know, family was horrible. Um, and then we were getting it ready. My same director, we were about to meet and then someone like, I don't know, maybe tipped him off or something that we were actually doing an intervention, which we kind of were. Yeah. Um, and he never called me back. Like it was, it was done. It just cut me out. Completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God, that's so sad. Yeah. That's so, so sad. And mm -hmm. I, you know what? And it, 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 that's part of the, 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 I feel like the monstrosity of, of Hollywood. It's like, yeah, you get somebody who's eight years old that young. And I mean, it's Taylor's oldest time. My yeah. God. It's like, Oh, it's still have, it's even worse now, I think because of all the different platforms now, TikTok. I mean, there's another doc I'm putting together now, again, focusing on young, the young stars, kids on TikTok, but it's the social media group. And there's, there's all these moms here. that are about to do this huge lawsuit against another mom who has this, I don't know. I, I'm so old, I don't know who these people are, but I guess they're like D'Amelio type, you know, social media yeah. uh, kids. But now they're finding out that the mom was like molesting some of them and letting them, you know, just it's just a really bad situation. So uh, we're kind of following that story and the lawsuit that's about to happen with that. God, and that's what's crazy. It's like, what will you do for a dollar? You know mm, what yeah. I mean? It's kind of like, where do your ethics and morals exactly. go? Exactly, greed comes into play. Oh, I for think sure. a lot of the times they start off wanting to do the right thing, but then... The parents just want to be famous themselves. For sure. And that's, that's the problem right there. You had, what's her name? Uh, uh, what's her name? D'Amelio on mm -hmm. Dancing with the Stars with her mom. Yeah, uh -huh. And you're like, what? <laughs> Who is this? And was I the only one that didn't know Charlie D'Amelio wasn't a dancer? Because I watched you know, that season in the first episode. 
you know, the mom went on first. I'm like, oh, she was really good. I'm like, oh, that's going to be embarrassing if she gets beat by her mom. Like, Oh, I know. Uh, Didn't know Charlie was a professional, amazing dancer. Oh, my God. It was she was incredible. But I mean, even like if you think about like Honey Boo Boo and her mom Mm -hmm. and like it's just it just it just goes on and on. And it's Mm -hmm. like I, I just felt so bad for Nick. Because like I, th- I think they were on tour and he was like like the day after he's like on stage mm-hmm. singing and there's sh- I'm like oh there's a picture of his pictures of his brother I was like that's yeah insane and I mean that family that that could be a whole doc just on the Carters I mean yeah. it, that family has gone through so much growing up Carter yeah oh that's right they had a TV show they had like a reality show yeah. on E or something like that I never right? got to see that but yeah they did it's weird mm. but ugh but uh, let's let's get into some. Um, some more you had you you came out how long ago was that like well publicly 2006 so 2006 was when you were on the cover of the magazine with yes. the with the yep i'm gay yeah, which i remember because i told people because you know i had 48 hours to decide am i gonna come out to the public or not but they were just writing the story no matter what i'm like i guess i'll do it with you guys i was like but can i just have one request just on the cover don't be like Yep, I'm gay, or yeah. like I'm gay. It's just like be a little more clever with it. Oh no, they went right to it. Like, well, I mean, oh, if you God. did it now, it'd be like, yes, mama. Like, yeah. it <laughs> no, it would never happen today. Thank yeah. God. Like, well, yeah, could you be imagine? Like, and yeah, I, even then, my my niece, who was so young at the time, I just remember her saying, "Why? Like, why? Why are you on the cover?" For uh-huh. this? I'm like, I know, right? And it's stupid. Just like I don't understand why people care. I'm like, I know. Oh, uh, but yeah, it was. And that was, was the good. day you heard a. Th- thousand young girls hearts just break <laughs> he was my favorite my sister like just mm. just god just slowly taking down her but no other pictures. lady could have me <laughs> no. but it's funny the the fans that i run to so much especially like at heart or in, in mm-hmm. west hollywood and so many lesbians i think i guess that was my market like i was the go-to that they had the, you know quote unquote crush on mm-hmm. and they're like yeah and i'm a lesbian i'm like wow i guess that was my market i didn't even know it a lesbian market yeah yeah mm-hmm. i think it was like you had this like you could be like ellen's brother that's what i say i feel yeah. like i look like ellen so yeah. maybe that that's the thing when did you know you looked like ellen when everyone told me that i look like ellen <laughs> <laughs> my whole life like you look just like ellen I'm like thanks even thanks? as a child oh yeah see i got martha plimpton from goonies oh uh, i i know I can see that. Y'all Thank can you be so much. Yeah, I love Martha. I do too. She's like, awesome. I, if there's ever a show and she needs to like have like a son or like a brother, I'm yes. available. Yes, that would be um, amazing. Have you ever met her? No, she's I would die. Lovely. Like, oh, she, I'm sure. She's so I think, fun and Cootie. hilarious. Yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to talk about that PR moment because did you you worked with Howard Bragman, right? No, the PR guru. Uh, I know Howard, did know yes. Howard. Yeah. Uh, he was my friend's. Uh, no, but I didn't work with Howard. I worked with, uh, oh my gosh, it's Ken Sunshine. Okay. Oh, because Ken it Sunshine? Was Ken Sunshine. What he was big. Th- he was Justin's guy. Okay. Um, and I'd never had a PR crisis, I guess you call yeah, it. Yeah, he was a PR crisis. And I didn't know if you were like, oh God, Lance is gay. He's about to come out. I know, like, what do I do? Everyone's going to hate me. Uh, so I was like, Justin, I need your guy. And so, yeah, Ken kind of rolled that out for us. Oh, good. Well, yeah, I mean, we're. I'm glad you came out because I was like, finally, God bless. And it, it was, was it the was, best it was, thing. Oh. Huh? It was the best thing. It has to be. Just that weight lifted oh my off God. of you. Oh, my Especially God. Especially being from Mississippi yeah. and like I'm from Texas and it's like it's such a it's such a thing. And I was I did this um this this interview with uh Metro, I believe it's Metro Weekly that came up this week and they Is that were like the ones that on the streets in New York, like you just Get the free magazine on the streets? Probably. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's what I do now. <laughs> that's my niche. Are you, oh, the one on the corner? Yep, that's me. Um, but it, it, they it, they asked me, they were like, well, what was it like? And I was like, well, you know, I had these moments. And I remember like being in bed, like looking up at the ceiling, like praying to God. Every night. Please, being, I want like, to wake please, up please, straight. Please, 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 yes. please, 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 please. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. I thought it was such a, a great moment. And um, Okay, I want to get into a game, Yay. and then we will get into a little questions, and then we will talk topics, okay? okay. I love being you here. I love that you're here, so this is wonderful. Okay, I want to play a game mm-hmm. called Fuck, Mary Kill. Okay, I can do that. Boy Band Edition. Okay. okay. All right. So, and NSYNC is not in this one. Thank God. They're not in any of them. They're like, kill, kill, kill. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what? They know what they did. They know what they did. <laughs> I know what you did. Okay, Fuck, Mary Kill, 98 Degrees, Backstreet Boys, O-Town. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. 
Um, I would fuck 98 Degrees. Okay, why? Because they were like football player beefy dudes. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, she's like, got a type. I do. I like a little beefy. Jeff Timmons? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I even looked past the 98 Degree tattoo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah. like, he was I, like... I give them a lot of shit on that one a lot. I'm yeah. sure, but uh, I mean, he was like dedicated. I think Nick actually got that one erased or either tattooed over. <laughs> yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. But they oh, had, like, yeah, he did have one too. Uh -huh. They always had those tribal tattoos. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Because so they had the, like the puka shells. They had like the, the sleeveless vest uh -huh. and their like guns were out. I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would marry O-Town because uh, they're just, I mean, they're lovely guys and mm -hmm. I got to tour them a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would have to kill off BSB so that we could officially <laughs> be the number one boy band in the world Take which they that. hold that title do uh, they have that title of course they're so, they're yeah, definitely the most successful boy band of all time wow yeah. you heard it first For guys sure. i can admit it i can admit i it. know I can admit it. but i'm glad that y'all are friends because yeah, i was like i mean there was britney christina and nsync and backstreet yeah. boys it tore the world in half yeah well it's it was a fun rivalry for sure yeah you know it kept us kind of on our game uh, but it's really fun now, especially with my show Frosted Tips, because it really is just all these boy band members coming together, swapping stories. We all hated each other, uh, but we all are just such good friends of now. Of course. But we always still like to kind of dig. dig. That's what friends do. It's so fun. So we have this hashtag boy band wars that's been going on for three years now on TikTok. And uh, like, if you go to that and just see all the shit talking that we're doing back and forth with each other and get the fans all riled up because they still are very passionate. Oh, yeah, for uh, sure. But it's fun to kind of poke the bear sometimes. Like, Who, who's the biggest shit talker, do you think? Uh, of any other band? Yeah. Mm, I'm going to guess AJ. AJ, I would say, is one of the best. Nick tries, but he's too nice. <laughs> he's always just so nice about yeah. it. I always want to get. I would love if Howie just read me. I think Howie that would needs just be, to step it up. He would never. I feel like never. he was too quiet. I'm ready for Howie to snap. He's too sweet. Yeah, uh, but I, that would be my favorite if, if he came and read me. On just to fill. It would be the best. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we're gonna keep this game going with the UK version. Ooh. Of Fuck, oh, fuck, okay. Mary kill. Okay. BB Mac. All right. Yeah. Take that. Okay. And. A band that passed on your hit song, Bye Bye Bye, Five. five. Okay, we're going to kill off five, because I don't really know them. <laughs> that was so quick. <laughs> well, we we didn't really have beef, but 98 Degrees had beef with them back in the day. 98 we were Degrees kinda, had beef with five? Yeah, we were over in Europe. We were on a radio tour, um, and you know, we're, we're the nice guys, but we were so excited that there was Americans on the tour, like, oh, 98 Degrees, cool. Um, but then they got in a little altercation on tour. So, you know, we had to back up our boys. We're like, uh -huh. all right, no, we're, you know, so, uh, yeah, they're gone. <laughs> so uh, mask. I know. So take that. Who's the other one? Uh, BB Mac. BB Mac. Mm. Yeah. BB Mac was kind of dreamy too. Yeah. Fuck BB Mac <laughs> for sure. They were all good looking. And then, uh, take that. I would definitely marry because they were. Gentlemen, one of the most successful boy bands of all time. Yeah, I mean, they might be the second. Actually. I they, they have to be. Yeah, I feel like they. And then there was like yeah. some other ones that just kind of yeah fizzled out. I was Robbie like, Williams, man. Robbie Williams still is still got killing it. it. I know he's going on my show next week. I'm so excited to like catch up with him. Where? Where? where, where? At Frosted Tips. Yeah, he's oh he's doing your show. Yeah, he's doing my oh, show that's week. badass. Yeah, we did Gary Barlow a month ago. Which was amazing because, you know, they hated each other. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, oh, I need all the stories. Now they like each other. And now uh, Robbie's the get because he never does any interviews. So God, I'm he's so, excited so he's rich. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. I mean, and this? Gary. I mean, Gary wrote all their songs. Really? Yes. I mean, he is he is loaded. So, yes, I'll marry Gary. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We will marry. Take that. Yeah. So take that. Uh -huh. All right. Let's get into some questions real quick. I'm gonna, I am gonna. feel like I told you I vetted some of these. Um, some of these I think we might have already answered. Um, we have not. Let's do Chris underscore Mandrick asks, What's your favorite cereal milk? I mean, let's get into some hard hitting ones, shall we? Cereal milk? Is there cereal milk? Cereal milk. Like, when like you so, eat... like what you drink after cereal? Yeah. Um, Fruity Pebbles? Yeah, same. Yeah. Or Cocoa Puffs. Oh, yeah. Or anything Cocoa like, Puff. like chocolatey. chocolatey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, <clears throat> or this Frankenberry. Is... Frankenberry. Good. Frankenberry, yeah. what a throwback. Oh. Were you born in 79? Shut your <laughs> mouth. Shut your mouth. Okay, here's one. This is a... Now, I said this before you came in to my producer, John. I was like, Lance, I've never, ever seen you upset or angry <laughs> at all. Yeah. So I want to call this question, what's up your bass? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the question is, what is your... 
What was your biggest pet peeve about being an in sync? Ooh. And then second part, what's your just biggest pet peeve mm. right now? With in sync, my biggest pet peeve was not sleeping. They sure. always had us. I mean, I was always so tired. I need my sleep. Like I'm not a morning person, and especially those first couple of years, you might have gotten three to four hours of sleep a night. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you get into a hotel at one, then you're up at like four or five in the morning, and just so tired. And I just asked, like, can we just have like one day to sleep, just one day? And no, no, it's like work. Um, so yeah, so. And then you, it just makes you in a bad mood. <laughs> like if, yeah. you don't, if you don't eat or you don't sleep, you're going to be in a bad mood. So, uh, yeah, those first couple of years was just not fun. And, a cranky and, bass. Yeah, it was cranky. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, you're young. You're young. Oh. I'm like, if you tell me I'm young one more time. Uh, so, <laughs> Put the yeah. satter all in between your toes. Get to work. Oh, yeah. And then my biggest pet peeve now, mm-hmm. bad drivers. Oh, yeah. I and am living in L.A. This is why we're friends, I think. <sighs> My husband hates driving me because he has such anxiety and mm-hmm. his goes to a 10 when I'm, you know, and I try not to speak when I'm driving with him in the car, but I can't help it because it's just, I want, my favorite job in the world would be if I could take people's licenses away. Oh. <laughs> I'd be like, like, pull over. Uh-uh, stop. You're done. Get out, done. You're walking. You like, a good time. No more. You're done. Uh, just idiot drivers. Horrible idiot drivers. Mine right now is the people who just stop in the middle of the street and put their mm-hmm. lights on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. And you're just supposed to go around them. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. on a residential street. I'm just going to stop in the middle. Yeah. I'm Look done. At the little, uh, well, well, oh yeah. my God. There's Desirable. nothing that pisses me off more. Mm-hmm. Um, who frosts your tips? Uh, Cass Tremaine wants to uh, know. Oh, um, well I do usually, but I have, I started going to this guy now. Um, uh, Daniel Moon, I think. I don't, is it Daniel? I know his last name's Moon. He's here in LA incredible color like just if you want crazy amazing color that actually like stays he's the guy um so yeah so once i started going a little purple i needed a little more help i like it but covid really taught me how to bleach my own hair really well and <gasps> color it myself i just can't do i can't do highlights that's the problem you know i can just do all one color yeah. fine but when it comes to the highlights i gotta go to moon yeah yeah okay mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know about that so <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. And this one's actually an interesting question I wanted to ask you. And then we got it. We're going to get into the Met Gala because that's. Yeah. The most I mean, important thing. The most yes. important thing. Yeah. Sure. You <laughs> you did all this. But <laughs> but what uh, about these cats? This is from uh, Dom. Oh, God. Dominaria. Mm, Dominiarma. Dominiarma. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Did any of your bandmates test your sexuality positively or negatively pre and post announcement of you coming out? Oh, um, you know, as long as I was within sync, none of the guys knew. I'm sure that they, I mean, assumed right at some point. Yeah, I would hope so. Um, and it, you know, there was definitely talk the last tour. I just, I remember there was one girl on tour with us, and uh, she was like, "I think we need to date." I'm like, "What?" She goes, "No, I, like people are thinking that you're gay, so I think we need a date." Was this a famous person? No, no, she was okay. on tour with us. Uh, <laughs> no, like she worked with us on tour. Uh, and I was like, what? I thought that was just like, oh, but I guess people were like talking. Um, and I love that she's like a martyr. She was just yeah, like, Lance, like, I'll take one for the we team. have to do this. People yeah. are talking. But, uh, you know, I didn't really care because I never acted on it. You know, I was not like dating guys or anything like that. Yeah. I was just, you know, I was asexual at yeah. that point. Um, but I do remember the one time. See, I just talked to Justin two weeks ago and he says that. We had a conversation about this, and he asked me about it. I'm like, I do not remember that at all. It must Maybe I put it out of my brain, but I never remember him asking me about it. But I do he remember- He asked you on tour? Yeah, like flat like out just, asked me if I was gay. Really? Yeah, but I don't remember that. Because it probably didn't happen. Well, I don't know, but I, Chris Kirkpatrick did. Now I remember that because it was on the set of It's Gonna Be May. Uh, <laughs> no, I, yeah, it was Gonna Be May. Uh, and I was in the dressing room. He comes in, and then he's just sitting on the couch, and he just looks at me and goes- are you gay? Oh, I went, uh, and it was the first time anyone's asked me that. And I've never even told anyone. I I didn't even tell myself. Uh, and I just freaked out. Like, no, what? No. What are you talking about? Just completely denied it. And that was it. Never spoke about it again. Um, and then I remember when we came out, he was so upset. He was like, I asked you if you were gay. And you did not tell me. I'm like, all right. You should have flipped okay. it back on Chris. I was like, I see those braids. What's that all about? Are you gay, uh, Chris Kirkpatrick? I know, but like, you know, I can understand when your best friends like think you're lying to them. Like, mm-hmm. why, why'd you have to lie to me? I wouldn't mind, but 
as a closet person, you don't know who's going to react a certain way. Yeah. Like, I have no idea. I luckily had a friend of mine who was my roommate at the time named Brad. And he, uh, when I was uh, in Texas, and he was the same way. He was like this big frat guy. And he was like my best friend. And uh, we're still friends now. But he was like that guy for me where he mm. was just like, I don't care. Mm-hmm. And I was like, really? Yeah. He's like, yeah. You're like, I wish I would have known that. God, yeah. I know. I was like, mm-hmm. God. <laughs> 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 wow, but Justin says wrestle. he told you and you don't remember. Yeah, I don't. I mean, maybe I was just so... See, I feel like bad. that should be reversed. Like, right. I feel like it should have been like, you told him and he doesn't remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I don't remember you saying that. Uh-huh. All right, Justin. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get into some looks. This is the talk of the town. It is the yeah. Met Gala. Mm-hmm. Did you watch any of this at all? Uh, I mean, no, I just watched everything online as yeah. it progressed and saw all the fun outfits. Did you have a favorite look? The theme was yeah. uh, Karl Lagerfeld throughout the years or mm-hmm. whatever. Black and white. <laughs> yeah. Black and white. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I My favorite, of course, is, um, I mean, I like Doja Cat you know, as the cat. But I also, uh, Jared Leto as the cat is my favorite. I mean, that just, whoever made that suit, I, I want that suit. I mean, so much puss on the runway. Like, mm-hmm. it was... Because he was, left so much money to his cat. That's the whole reason? Is that the story? I think that's what it was. Because yeah. his his cat's name... What is the cat's name? It's like charpo- charcuterie or mm-hmm. something. It's like shoopapo- shoopapo- But it inherited a lot. Look under the cat picture. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just Carl. I know what the... I can't even think of the damn cat's name. It's It's something French and fluffy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Jared Leto shows up in this cat suit, which, I mean, it looks so real. It looks real. animated. Like, it's just like, that That looks like someone drew that. Yeah. yeah. I definitely think this will definitely be one of the uh, Halloween costumes of the year. Yeah, you definitely knew, need this cat suit. Uh, um, I want to go as Halloween with that. It would be hot as hell, but it'd be worth it. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And then nice. um, I thought Doja Cat, because Doja Cat came out first, and she mm-hmm. went as the cat as well, mm-hmm. which I was like, oh my God, everyone's just dressing up like cats. Yeah. And she came out during the uh, when I was working on the telethon, and you know one of the PAs was like, "Oh my God, Doja Cat's on the runway!" And I was like, "Holy shit, let me see!" And I go, "Yes, yeah, the, it was the, the perfect." Thing underneath her uh, nose, kind of weirds me out though. The Whoville kind of thing. Yeah, it just looks like a like a mini vagina. Okay, right? what would you know about a mini vagina? Oh, <laughs> If I had a nickel. This I uh, promise you. <laughs> but right, I mean, look at that. It's like a mini vagina. A mini, a mini lab. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think it was so um I I love that little bit of extra because I honestly I'm like ever since the theme was like camp, I yeah. was very underwhelmed. Well, yeah, because half the people didn't Did, know what camp was. They I didn't guess. know it at all. Yeah. I was just kind of like, come on, guys. Mm-hmm. And this was the year that I was like, okay, we're getting fashion, we're getting looks. Of course, there were like a whole bunch of fails, and everyone's so quick to be like, fail, fail, fail. Mm. Um, we had Kim Kardashian wearing her Playboy pearl shoot, which North was left in the car. <laughs> um, North went she with her. Get to go in? No, she had to be eighteen to do the oh, Met Gala, and oh. and Kim was like. North, honey, come on, let's go. And the Met Gala was like, she has to wait in the car. And she's like, North, wait in the car. <laughs> oh, my God. No um, and then um, I'm trying to think. There were so many moments. Uh, like Jessica Chastain showed up as a blonde. Uh, Bad Bunny showed up. I mean, God. Talk about bringing sexy back. Like That is a sexy back. I am not a back person, per mm-hmm. se. But... Yeah, those, those are good back. Who's the one on the left? Um, I think that is... Uh, the uh that's Simon Porte Yakamu oh. or Jakamu. I don't the designer. Know Simon. Oh, he's the design. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, to go here you get invited by a designer, right? And mm-hmm. you sit at their table. Yeah. I'm, obviously I've never been. Uh yeah, why is that? My, you think I was known for my fashion in the NSYNC days? <laughs> Now that you think about it, <laughs> we, we, we've been banned for life because of our outfits of NSYNC, I'm sure. I think we need a, a, a revisit. Yeah, I didn't learn fashion until I lived in New York. Oh, I'm for like, sure. I'm like, oh, this is This is fashion. Does. Yeah. And, of course, being gay. Like, you know, before I was out, you know, I didn't want to be, you know, I didn't want to stand out at all. Yeah, because I remember, like, when Seacrest started doing the metrosexual mm-hmm. look, which I hated. Yeah. Well, like, he just dressed nice. Leave him alone. Yeah. Um, we have Taika Watiti who mm-hmm. looked fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, uh, Giselle. This is newly single Giselle. Yeah. I loved this, like, flirty, feathery boa number 
She's just single. She's getting new dick. She has to be. I mean, come on. She's Giselle. I of mean, course she is. Yeah. She and better then, be. This was the Met that I was so proud of because the guys stepped it up. Finally. Finally. Yeah. Um, I was very disappointed, and I'm going to say it, and I'm going to probably get in trouble for this. I was very disappointed in Jonathan Bailey from Bridgerton. Yeah. Did you see it? I did. My... My ex does all of his like hair and stuff. Like he's his groomer, so he was putting all his pictures up. Not yeah. that kind of groomer, guys. <laughs> not that kind of groomer. It's not that he's a drag queen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, uh, it, it was underwhelming for sure. Well, he was like, "I'm doing young Carl Lagerfeld." Yeah. I was like, "What? Yeah. No, there, you're like the no hottest guy in like the world." Like, no. don't just wear sunglasses. I mean, we had Pedro Pascal. This was great, and everyone, of course. Do you get Pedro Pascal? Um, I do. I mean, the kids love this daddy. I do too. But what is it? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't I know. I think a Pedro Pascal is like the new Monet painting. You're yeah. just kind of like, I like it, but I don't know why. Mm-hmm. And It's a Star Wars thing. I don't know. It's, it's, I think it's a Star Wars. Mm-hmm. It's a... It's I think a it's Buffy a, thing. It's a, the so, Buffy? Like, because he was on Buffy? The no. Clip, the clip went viral. I, I think we're at the point where a lot of these people like success stories. And he uh, worked hard. He was on that Buffy episode. The clip went viral. And now everybody's on That's board. what it is on TikTok. No. Yeah, okay. Also, lest we forget, he was on that MTV, like, Canadian sex show. Do you remember that one? It was like a soap opera. Undressed. Undressed. Oh Do you remember gosh. Undressed? Wasn't that... Uh... Yeah, wasn't that uh, Nikki Deloach and like, probably yeah, uh-huh. yeah, and it was like th- they were like there was like gay subplots and yeah. stuff, and I remember being like, oh, oh, oh. I do, uh, I didn't know he was on that. He was on that, yeah, uh-huh. and he's giving leg, and everyone's like, Daddy, feed us! Like oh, everyone's good. just kind of like going, and then we have Lil Nas X. I mean, my God, that's a lot of crystals. I mean, could you imagine how long that took? I th- that was the first thing I thought about. Yeah. I-, I looked at this and I was like, oh, that looks amazing. How long was he in the chair? Yeah, him and Doja Cat, it must take hours. I think he was the guy that was wrapped up in the mummy oh, wrap. We don't know who that was. I don't think it's been released yet. Did yeah. you see the video of that where they like come out of the hotel and they mm-hmm. have like some mummified, like mm-hmm. <laughs> bandaged person? Like in over- bubble wrap. Yeah, yeah. I think mm-hmm. it was him just to kind of keep him intact. But I mean, this was spectacular. He showed ass. We were here for it. Rihanna. Like, Rihanna shows up in the classic um, Lagerfeld Flowers. Mm-hmm. Um, showed up half an hour late after everyone, like, left. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because she can. It's Rihanna. She can um, Janelle Monet was in a Christmas tree uh, <laughs> number. And then she took it off and revealed a whole thing. Billy, I- This is Billie Eilish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is Billie Eilish on Ozempic? Who isn't on Ozempic? That's true. I mean, I'm not, but I mean, yeah, I mean, she looks great. She looks mm-hmm. so good. Mm-hmm. But I was like, her head like that. I was like, is that Jennifer Connelly? I thought it. I thought it was like not her, but she looks fantastic. She's doing the black and white. I mean, mm-hmm. gothic, chic, of course. And then um, this guy brought a bicycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that one of those Martone bikes? I don't even know. But David Byrne from the Talking Heads. Um, and then the biggest star on the runway was this cockroach. Um, there was a Met Gala cockroach and, um, Kanye? people were like, it's kind of funny cause people were taking pictures of it and like, who are you wearing? And this cockroach was just like <laughs> rummaging through and then some asshole steps on it and kills it. No, that's where's PETA. There was already a whole like. R.I.P. Everything. So I thought the Met Gala was overall, um, it was good. There were some good looks, um, and I'm glad people tried. And um, so, what happens at the Met Ball? So, is it a dinner? You vape. Okay, you vape. <laughs> you just chat. You just chat. Chat, chat in the bathroom. Well, you all you you have to buy a ticket. So you get invited to go, mm-hmm. and it's a charity event for the Met for the 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 so, Met. So it raises money York. for the Met. Okay. Yeah, and so ticket prices went from. This year, I think they went from, I want to say, ten to twenty thousand dollars a ticket, and then they went to fifty thousand dollars this year. Wow! 
$50, so you get invited and then you got to pay on top of that. You get invited, you pay on top of it. And no, 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 you, you pay, pay on top of it to, for a ticket. The, uh-huh. the celebrities get invited. Uh-huh. They don't and have then, to pay? Yeah, no, but oh. I feel like if you're like a prestigious member of society, yeah. <laughs> you can get a $50,000 ticket to go hang out with the celebrities and stuff. Okay. But there might be like a dinner and stuff like that. So I could buy my way in. You could, Babe, there's always a way to buy yourself All right, in. I'm going to start a GoFundMe right yeah. now. <laughs> GoFund Lance to go to the I Met 50 Gala. grand to go to the Met Gala. I will dress as a cat. I will dress up as a cockroach. I will beat the cockroach. Yeah, I'll be Yes. like in the back like hey guys it's me uh-huh. and, you were like, <laughs> and then someone like just steps on me repeatedly um just more bedazzled this year like, oh I bedazzled cockroach it. that's what I, oh <laughs> yes i'm here for it are you up to speed we have we have time for this last story and um are you up to speed with this whole ed sheeran thing the lawsuit yes uh a little bit yeah, yeah. it's kind of fascinating because he wrote uh he wrote this song. What's the name of the song? Do we know which one it is? Thinking Out Loud. Thinking yeah. Out Loud. Yeah, thank you. And apparently he sampled Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On. Mm-hmm. And the songwriter... Allegedly. Allegedly. The alleged songwriter. No, we he allegedly sampled it. The, so, the, so, oh. the co-writer of the song, his estate is suing Ed. For for a hundred million dollars, a hundred million dollars for copywriting this song. Now, Ed has said if he is found guilty, he is never singing again. That's not going to be true. (laughs) That's what I said, too. That's not going to be true. There's no chance. But what's the drama? Why the drama, Ed Sheeran? Look, get a comb. You're going to court. It's I've, I've heard both. And, you know, it's similar. But right. There's. Hundreds of millions of songs at this point. Thank you. That's There's, what I said. You never know. Like you could have listened to something in 1987, and then all of a sudden you're a writer in 2023, and it just kind of pops in your head. Like that sounds great. I'll do that. And you're like, oh, I didn't know that. I kind of got inspired by that 20 years ago. You don't know now if it's like exactly sure. I get it. But you know, art is art, and I feel like that was not close enough. But also, me. that's what I'm saying. Is it's like when is it? Can it not be a tribute to the song? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this guy's like, this guy's clearly like down and out. Million. You think that song made a hundred million? It made way more than that. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, we're just thinking out loud here. Yeah. But we're just thinking out loud. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. It's like, because do you know the guy on TikTok? And I forget his name. And he's he's like a bald guy, handsome, and he does like all the songs and how they're sampled. He's like, do you ever? Notice no, that this think, you, you don't know who that guy mm-hmm. is. God, can we look him up real quick, just real fast? Just bald, do, bald guy on TikTok. Bald guy on TikTok <laughs> songs. So there's this guy on TikTok. His name is Jared Germain, and he does all of these songs, and he does them like songs that were sampled in the '80s, that were in the '90s. Do these songs sound familiar? He did one actually for Backstreet Boys like last week, and he says they all use the same. It's the doom doom ch- yeah doom doom ch- same mm-hmm. thing. I want you back, tearing my heart as long as you love me. Like every Max Martin song has that doom doom ch- doom doom ch- doom doom ch- yeah. It's the mm-hmm. or the um, the dun 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 like the that the synth and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So I follow this guy. I think he's amazing because I did. If you're listening to me. <laughs> Uh, Jared Germain, I said that Celine Dion, um, that's the way it is, Mm -hmm. and uh, Shape of My Heart by Backstreet Boys have the same sound. Yeah, and... You know, because she goes, I could read your mind. It's the same writer, and I know you. You know, the background vocals are the Backstreet Boys on that song. What? Yeah. Uh huh. Did. Well, shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> I thought I was a genius. Yeah, because we did, we did a special with her where we sang the song with yeah. her. And then the radio started playing our version instead of the original version that the Backstreet Boys were on. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, same writer. But then, like, Kelly Clarkson and Beyonce, I remember that was a yeah, thing. Yeah, that was Ryan Tedder that wrote that one. And so, people are just out there writing the same song for different artists and making money off yeah, of it? Yeah, it's a well, formula. It's a formula. I remember, mm-hmm. and then that the September song, You'll Never See Me Again, that's mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah. Charlie XCX, mm-hmm. Robin S is every Robin S and Beyonce. Yeah. There's, I mean, look. It's, so how it's is Ed Sheeran the problem? I don't know. I mean, this has been going on for years now. Um, I just think the Marvin Gaye estate's just 
really wants as much money as they can get. I mean, they're not writing any new music, so I, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, they're gonna squeeze yep, it all. Yep, I'm out. gay, uh-huh. Marvin Gay, Marvin Gay. But okay, so that's I was wondering about that because I was like, how is this like? If he, Here's if the he thing. can't I win, think, look, I think a good way to you know settle all this is you take. 20 people, you put them in a room, you let them listen to a song, you let them listen to it, and say, do you hear a similarity? Like, just like random people, just like a, a jury. Uh-huh. And if majority of people say no, then there you go. If they can't, if just the layman person cannot hear it, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, but I mean, like, when Lady Gaga did Born This Way, and Madonna was like, that's Express Yourself, Madonna wasn't like, I'm taking this bitch yeah. to court. Mm-hmm. Like, it was yeah. just kind of like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. But she called her out in a concert for it and like uh, yeah. saying. Who, with, there was someone recently too that someone also called it out like, well, this is it. And then they gave them publishing from it. I think it was Taylor Swift or someone. They're like, oh, and they're like, I'm so sorry. And they just gave them publishing from it because they did think it was sounded similar. I, I think it was uh, Haley Williams and uh, that song. Because um, Haley Williams did that uh, that new pop singer that does... She's like huge now. Oh, Olivia like, Rodrigo yeah, and um, okay. and Paramore, Paramore right? Yeah. Good for you. You look yeah. happy and healthy. And yeah. I think, yeah, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. Olivia. That, yeah. Good yeah. job, John. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. got a Paramore fan yeah. over here. Worked 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 at the label for long enough. Yeah. yeah. Well, awesome. Well, good to know because I was just like Ed Sheeran. I'm 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 rooting for you. I know. So I have one question that yes. someone DM. John did I, have a question. I have uh, a personal question, yes. but I have a good DM question. Yes. So with the whole um not not being out yet, what was it like with the on the line? filming like what what was going on through that because that a lot of my friends that's one of their like guilty pleasures Uh it was a really good film what was real guilty what (laughs) what was it like getting that role and having to like knowing yourself that you were not out yet and then having to be um looking back i mean that was my first film and i don't watch it but (laughs) i did see it once in when at the premiere and it's horrible but i see myself (laughs) And I'm like, oh my God, that is, it's not me. I couldn't, I couldn't act because I couldn't be myself. Like it was just horrible. I, mean, I was so downplaying who I was, even in a film that it was just sad to watch. Oh no. Like, really sad. Like I could, I was like, just rule Sean and everything. I'm like you're supposed to be the lead of the movie. Yeah. Like get a little personality. But even then I was afraid to even show personality in a film because I thought people would think I was gay. Oh God. Um, so I was like. Think, pretending to be a straight guy, which I thought meant like, yeah, oh, you gotta be like, oh this, my god, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. just like you know, just a drag. Is that your straight impression? I guess so. It is. Yeah, mine's like, mine's like, hey, yeah, what's yeah. up? Yeah. Uh, 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 but I look at interviews of me too. Any interview within sync, like I have this kind of like low light, real country voice. Like you know, I just did not. I didn't want to speak. I was yeah. so boring. Yeah, so boring. You were kind of boring. Yeah, but I mean, like. You were also a kid, so you were mm. shy and you didn't know who you were, and like you kind of let everybody else kind of talk, and you mm. were just like, yeah, because they were telling. I would always, and you were making ten grand, <laughs> you know, like, ten grand. But you'd always hear these, you know, because everyone always made jokes about gay people and all that. Oh yeah, and I remember one of the things was like, oh, you know how you can tell someone's gay uh, is because they use the word so, and um, and a lot of their conversations like, oh, he's so la la so so, and so. There we go. So, um, or it's giving share. So yeah, <laughs> but I didn't want to speak because I didn't want words like that to come out, and people be like, ah, ah, see, he's he's saying those words. So I just, oh. I was this, then I became the shy one. Yeah, you were the shy, the like shy the shy one. country boy, yeah. like sweet baby angel mm-hmm. face. Nah. What was your other question? Didn't you have another one? Yeah. So. Uh, I think growing up, we really liked the songs that weren't singles, like my my generation. So Celebrity, one of our favorite songs, Space Cowboy. Oh, yeah. Bam, bam, yeah. Bam. So, <laughs> with, Which with is, my... by the way, Joey Fatone farting. <laughs> Listen what? To it, it goes, bam. Space bam, Cowboy bam, bam. is Joey Fatone farting? Yeah, that sample. That, uh, 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 yeah, it's him farting. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That, Wait, did he put a microphone up to his no, butt? No, he just did it in the studio and the producer kept it and put it in. God bless <laughs> That this. is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Joy Fatone, thank you for your bowel movements. <laughs> uh, Not every hero wears a cape. <laughs> so, uh, like, when you're, a big, when you're the biggest actor, if you get a script you don't like, you can kind of fuck around with it, change it up a little mm-hmm. bit. 
you guys were the biggest boy band in the world. They give you the lyrics to Space Cowboy. Mm -hmm. Does anybody question anything? No, because JC wrote that one, and you don't question JC. <gasps> Jesus. <laughs> God. He is a master writer, and it's perfect, okay? Everything's great, damn it. Everything's great. Everything's great. No, uh, yeah, JC wrote that one, so yeah, I never would question anything. Well, also, school. the movie Space Cowboys... Mm -hmm. Used that song, didn't they? I think so. Yeah. So there you go. Mm -hmm. JC was riding all along. Like, do you remember the movie Space Cowboys? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, someone Tommy, had to. Tommy Lee Jones, I think. Yeah. Tommy Lee in Jones. Space. Just a bunch yeah. of old people. Yeah. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. a bunch of old people in space. Yeah. God. Well, Lance, thank you so much for being here. Of course. Happy early birthday. Thank you very much. Enjoy your in Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> I'm so excited. Where can where can people find you? Like mm -hmm. what 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 you got going on? Yeah. Uh, well, you can find me on any of your podcasts. I mean, seriously. Platforms uh, for. Frosted Tibbs, uh, Bedtime Stories with Ingleside Inn, or The Last Soviet. Uh, and then, of course, I'm at Lance Bass on all the platforms, except all Twitter. It. I hate Twitter. Bye bye. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's just got dark. Yes. And make sure to um, check Lance out and check out myself on the uh, on May 7th on the Drag Isn't Dangerous Telethon on YouTube Live as well as Moment. So check it out. It's coming out 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I actually have to go there now and tape some stuff. So. We'll see you guys next week on Just Saying with Justin Martindale. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>